Hey, Joe Gilder here. In this video, I want to show you three ways to group tracks in Studio One if you want to do any like bulk editing or really any other kind of process. Let's dive in. So I'm thinking in terms of editing. So I just recorded these drums. By the way, if you just want to see, let's say, your drums, you don't want to see everything else just for the visual clarity, come over here to the left-hand side and click on this track list. I use the shortcut Shift F4. It gives you this. And what you can do is, and when you click on this little circle, it hides that specific track. And the best part is, like, I just want to show my drums. I can just hover over this bass, click and drag all the way down, and now it just shows me my drums, which is nifty. Maybe it's only nifty if you're doing a video, but I think it's nifty in, in general. Sometimes I just want to focus on like the vocal. I just want to have that on screen. So we're looking at drums, and let's say what I want to do is I need to edit the drums. Let's say there's a drum hit that is not on the beat. Let's find one and just make it up. Let's say this one, okay, let's say this one was a little ahead of the beat. The beat is at bar 26, little ahead of the beat, and we wanna just slide that over and do some editing. Well, we could do this, right? But what have we just done? We edited the sub kick track. We didn't edit any of the other drums. They all need to be edited together. So what are the ways that you can edit them together? I'm gonna show you three and possibly even more as we go. The first way is kind of the most like knuckle dragger sort of way. Like if you're a Neanderthal, um, you can just click, select the arrow tool, come to a blank section of the song where it becomes the arrow and just drag over the tracks that you want to edit. And now they become all selected. And now we can do things to them. So we could say, come in here and select that and then select that problem is now these are selected, these are not. So I'd have to reselect these and then move them. So this is only helpful if I just want to delete a big chunk of things or I want to move the whole drum track. Like here's the drum track. I just wanted to slide the whole thing over, but that's not what I want here. So that's not terribly useful, but it can work for like a single thing that you want to do in a pinch. The other thing you can do is you can click on the first track. Let's deselect everything. Um, we were at bar 26, let's zoom back in here. Click on the first track, hold down shift, click on the last track. That will select all of these tracks. And then you can press command G, or if you just right click on one of the tracks, you'll see there is an option to group selected tracks. This is something I used to do all the time when I was a Pro Tools user. They have this really cool kind of group setting where I can assign a keyboard shortcut to different groups to turn them on and off. Turns out you don't need it in Studio One, but it, we do have the option so to at least create some specific groups. So I say, yes, group selected tracks, and this window pops up. It says, why don't you name this sucker? So I'll name it drums. Now I have a drum group. Now, whatever I do to this will happen to everything. So if I come in and I go, I wanna edit this piece right here. If I select it on just a few of them, it selects it on all of them. And I could uh, double click. I could zoom in, I could move this one over, I could press X to crossfade, and all of this is happening across all of the tracks. This is the way specifically for drums that are all recorded at the same time, but also for anything that maybe is stereo. Let's say you put multiple mics on an acoustic guitar to record it, and they span multiple tracks for some reason. You could group them, this way you can edit them together. Otherwise, editing them one at a time is a... Uh, template for disaster. So this is an easy way. The problem with this though is now no matter what I do to these tracks, even if I come over to the mixer and I go to like change the panning on something, you see it's happening to everything. The faders are all locked together. Everything is grouped because we told it to group. So we would have to disable this group. How do we do that? That gets a little more tricky. You could select them all again and then you could choose, what's it called? Dissolve the group which is command shift G, um, or there is a group section over here. I never use this, but it's here in the mixer. It shows us what groups we have and we can kind of, I think, and yeah, enable and disable them by clicking on these little dealy bobs there. So that's somewhat helpful. If you do a lot with groups and you have huge sessions, that might be, that might be something that you explore further. I don't use that because I don't like to have to remember when things are grouped and then have to remember the shortcut and then have to maybe go turn the group on and off. I like this idea. If you use folders, which I do and I highly recommend, I've got all of these drums inside this drum folder. So I can open and close the folder. And I've also connected this drum folder 
if there's no bus connected, I use add bus channel. It creates a bus in my mixer. So now it's both a folder and a bus is the way it behaves. So it behaves the same way here and here. And since I do a lot of more top down style mixing, I like to have all my drums going through a drum bus. This makes sense. This is the way my brain works. Everything goes through a bus in my sessions, usually one of seven buses and drums, bass, electric, acoustic, keys, vocals, background vocals. Those are my seven buses generally. So now you may have noticed if we, let's make sure, okay, nothing's grouped now, right? I can do things to individual tracks and it's not grouping them together. But inside of this folder, you may have noticed these little chess pieces. <laughs> it looks like a bunch of pawns. Those are actually, that's the sign for groups. And what happens is when we click that button, it automatically creates a group for whatever's inside that folder. So we can come into that folder once we've clicked that button, whoops, and then we can do what we did before. We have groups, we can edit things, we can move things around. Delightful. And if we're done, we just have to click that button and turn it off again. So we didn't have to create a group because when we create a group using the command G that I showed you before, one piece of that is you have to create a name for the group. I don't necessarily want a name. I just want to edit them together and then be done with it. But this basically creates a group with automatically for you and it's just called the name of the folder itself you can go do things and then when you're done you can undo it and i believe if i group these and i come over here to edit okay that does group them over here as well so it's acting in the exact same way i was wondering if there could be just an edit group versus a um folder group and yes you can all right we just we learned something together if you have a group you could right click on it if you want to get super tweaky and you could call this just an editing group and maybe mute solo. Well, maybe not that. Maybe just the editing. So now this group that was automatically created when we hit that button is an edit group. So when I go to do any editing stuff, it happens across all of the drums. But when I go to do any mixing stuff, it only it doesn't group them together. That's pretty clever. So you could set up your template to have that group on by default and with that specific setting. That is super interesting. I don't know if I'll do it because I don't like default yet to generally. And I may want to go into specific tracks and not have them always be selected. But that is intriguing for sure. But anyway, that is how you group and edit things together inside of Studio One. Hope that was helpful. I, I bet you learned something from this video because I learned something from this video, which is I've been using Studio One for what, a decade now? And I still learn new things. That's glorious. Thanks for watching. See ya.